All right, gonna do a video today. A uh, guy on the group, Base Heads on Low Budget, said uh, Bradley Ruiz was asking about one of these, uh, how to make the connection on there. Now he mentioned maybe you could take these nuts off and put a ring terminal under that. Uh, some guys said take these completely off <clears throat> and drill the hole and put nuts and bolts. That's extremely awkward. There's not a lot of space in there. Now these are my favorite, uh, you know, low power under a thousand watts, uh, spring terminals. And I test a lot of stuff. So, you know, I don't care for the twist terminals, the binding post. And this is really small. So you're not getting in there. You know, if you get in there to try to twist a binding post, trust me, it's a pain in the ass. So, uh, anyway, these aren't much i think they used to be a lot cheaper but i think they're two for eight dollars or something like that on amazon anyway i told him to solder it so what we're going to do is have a little video showing how to solder that now i've already stripped these wires <clears throat> and this is the end we're going to put on the spring cup terminals that's maybe uh, three eighths of an inch stripped back, twist it together. Now, what I've got, that's my Weller WP35. It's not expensive. I use the, like a screwdriver blade tip. This is, I think this is a 30, 35 watt iron. Um, eh, no, no I'm, I'm sorry. That might be a hundred watt iron. But anyway, I don't know if this will focus. It won't. Okay, it's a, you have to trust me. It's a screwdriver blade attachment. Now there's several methods you can get to clean that. You can take a wet paper towel. I've got this tinning block and that cleans that all up. Gets all the crud off of it. All right, then we take a little bit of solder and Trying to get this where you can see it. There you go. Solder. Solder. So that's tinned. Now, this solder, I don't I don't think you can unless you find it on eBay. But it's 6040 rosin core solder. That's what you want to get. And uh the rosin core has the flux built into it, so it'll stick. So we're going to take the tip of the iron, hold it to the, I guess, lift it up a little bit so it doesn't melt the plastic. And you're going to hold it there, maybe count to 10. And then apply the solder. It's already stuck. One more time to get a little extra coat on it. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten solder solder all right that's done now you've tinned the leads uh now we're going to tin the end of the stripped wire and let's get this up here and this is the first time i've done this with one of these stands for the phone so you'll have to excuse me I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but same deal. You hold the iron to the wire, warm it up, and then bring the solder in. If the wire is clean, it will flow right to it, like it sucks it up like a sponge. If you've got old wire, you got a problem because it's not going to stick. All right, warm up the wire, bring in the solder, bring in that side, flip it over. Warm up the wire, bring in the solder. There. <clears throat> All right, both of these are tinned. Okay, see that? Now, positive, negative. Positive is on the left. So, we're going to hit this positive. I'm going to warm this 
up a little bit warm the wire up a little bit and then bring them together and warm them at the same time about 10 seconds that's solid do the same thing we're going to warm the surface warm the wire and bring them together warm them together you see the solder turn to liquid like flows if you can see a crack, it, it was not hot enough. Uh, in other words, when you put them together, if there's a distinct line between like the wire and the surface, that's what solder looks like when it's called a cold solder joint. When it flows like liquid, it's like a sponge. It's good. All right, that is that. So you've now got soldered on terminal. It's very easy. If you play around with car stereo stuff or anything else, really, that uh, you need to get some solder, some iron. Uh, I'd recommend one of these tinning blocks. I think Kester made it. I can't remember. It's very helpful. It's very solid connection. I don't know who the hell says soldering is not a solid connection. Everything I've soldered has never failed. Um, I don't. I don't know what tape. Now the next thing. Ah. Uh, and I soldered on <laughs> the wrong leads. So, instead of stopping it, I'm going to let you watch because I'm going to unsolder this. This was the short lead for the reach around to the dual voice cools. All right, so let's cut that off. This, by the way, Robert Hi-Fi Vega shared this there was five pairs of these on amazon for like seven or eight bucks you want to talk about some nice wire snips look at this bam bam i think it'll take your finger clean off not bad for eight bucks for five pairs whatever it was all right let's go that's gonna go to my dual voice coil so we need this one about Three quarter of an inch and three quarter of an inch all right that's that now let's go back and solder again and again I'm gonna use these hmm look at this uh, BAM that is a quick clean cut not bad for what is that, a dollar fifty a pair or something like that? Alright, so as you can see, I I got a few pairs. Alright, now let's go do this again. Blah blah blah. Hmm. So again, I'm gonna tin the tip of the iron. We've already tinned the cups. Let's tin this wire. And there we go. That's the hot. That's the one side and the other side all right positive on the right warm it up warm the wire put them together <clears throat> that's one let's get a little more right here And on that wire, put them together. All right, helps with it being about 40, 45 degrees. All right, so that's soldered, that's done. Now the next thing while I'm doing this, I figured I'd show somebody might not know 
<clears throat> you see these wire ferrules? This is going to come to my subwoofer. And most of the subwoofers have spring terminals. If they have the spade terminals, you can solder the wire directly to the spade terminals just like you do or did with this one. If they have the spring terminals, these wire ferrules prevent you from having stray wires. So what I'm doing, this is one wire going to the cup, this one. One wire is going to do the reach around on the subwoofer. Take my two hots. Twist them together. I'm going to use the uh, one for number 10 wire. Might even, hmm, we might even give away with the number 12 wire here with them twisted together. Let's see what it acts like. Yeah, a little tight. <clears throat> All right, so let's go with this 10. I'm going to take the ferrule crimper. There. See that? Then you take your trusty snippers and snip off that extra sticking out. There you go. Make sure you have no strays because... That's asking for shorting out a subwoofer. All right, same deal on the negative side. Twist those together. Put your ferrule on. Put it in the crimper. One squeeze, it's done. Trim off the rest. There's the, looks like I got a stray right there. Let's get that over there. All right, there it is. There's the cheap clippers. Um, that's the end of the cup. And this is the end that will go to the other side of a dual voice coil. That, I think, with this wire, I might be able to go with 14. Let's see. Yep. All right. 14 gauge ferrule. Crimp that. Trim it. All right, there you go. And another 14 gauge ferrule. You got that like so. Put it in the crimper like so. And trim off the excess. Now, if y'all have messed around with enough subs, you'll notice sometimes when you put your wire into the push terminal it's especially with this ferrule it's going to stick out i mean horizontal stick out if your hole's tight you're going to have a problem so sometimes what i do uh, if it's enough room without it you don't want the metal of this ferrule or the wire to short in other words touch the basket you know metal because it's that's a short conducts Sometimes there's enough room where you can feed these from the back side of the push terminal forward without it touching anything. And that'll give you, you know, substantially extra space without trying to jam your wires up, putting the sub in the box. So that's all that. Uh, da, 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 da. We did the ferrules, we did the soldering. Uh, usually, I'll run a piece of heat shrink over this just to keep this, see right there, from coming apart. I'll run the heat shrink right up to the edge of that protective, this is yellow, but whatever. 
you know, and bring it down, eh, you know, inch, inch and a half below that and heat shrink it. Uh, this side, not a bad idea, especially if you're going to be twisting these and bending these to try to get them into the back side of the spring terminal. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd heat shrink that, you know, inch down, inch and a half down. Uh, the glue heat shrink even better if you can. So that's it. We soldered, we crimped. Uh, that's it for today. Have a good one.